All right, welcome back, my friends. Thank you for joining me. It is July 20th, 2023, when I'm recording this video. It's probably not when you're seeing it, uh, but that is the date today. And I'm gonna take just a couple of minutes of your time to give you some food for thought. If what I say resonates with you personally, if it means anything at all, leave a comment down below and tell me how. If it's relatable in any way, I would love to hear about it. Um, and I would uh, certainly appreciate it if you would hit the like button and share this with others if you haven't ever done so before. Check out my other videos. And in the end, if you feel like donating to this channel, I'll leave a PayPal link down below so you can do that, and I'll give you some recognition on my videos. So the first thing I want to talk about, it's not my main point, but it was something that just kind of dawned on me this morning as I was flipping through some articles online. I saw where a guy, and I don't really know when this occurred, but he, uh, he set a world record of balancing an umbrella, a closed umbrella, on his fingertip for over three hours. Now, I, I, here's the thing about world records. They bore me to death. I've had several Guinness Book World Records uh, books during my lifetime. When you were a kid, Ah, they're kind of fascinating. They're kind of fun because you realize how weird and quirky people are. And you kind of laugh at them, but they really, most, most of the world records I see have no real significance or impact on the way people live. It doesn't help anything. It doesn't, you know, it's not like a sport. You know, if someone sets a, a, a world record in a particular sport, that means something. There's, there's some way to gauge that and compare it to things that other people have done in the same arena, right? But so many things like this guy um, bouncing an umbrella on his fingertip is just completely pointless. And they, so I started wondering, why in the world do people set pointless world records like this one? I'm only going to give three examples because I need to move on. Like this one, um, most rotations hanging from a power drill. Yeah. Check this picture out. Most rotations hanging from power drill. Here's what it says. Um, this feat probably requires an incredible amount of upper body strength, and it's more interesting in a very bizarre way than plain powerlifting. The current record is 148 rotations in a minute <laughs> achieved by this legend. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'll put it on the screen. 100... 148 rotations in a minute. Oh, the, the record probably couldn't be longer than a minute. Can you imagine going 148 rotations? But why? why? Why would somebody do something like this? Okay, moving on. Most snails on a face. Finn Keeler, a young boy from Utah, nabbed the rather odd record for most snails on face back in 2009. On his 11th birthday, he allowed friends and neighbors to cover his head with the slimy creatures that stayed there for more than 10 seconds. They sent the record off to Guinness, but even they were too smart to list such a useless achievement. <laughs> and, and even by their own admission, there are so many entries that are completely pointless. There's whole, there's whole long websites that... Uh, covered the topic of pointless world records, I found out. Um, most watermelons sliced open on a stomach. For some really strange reason, Guinness has a record for most watermelons sliced open on a stomach under one minute. This record was set by Bippin Larkin. I don't know. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. Who cleanly sliced through 48 watermelons using a machete. Truth be told, it's not Larkin who deserves the honor, but his super trusting assistant who offered his stomach for this stunt. We don't want to consider the what ifs for this one. So when I was a kid, we had this man come to our, our church. My dad was a pastor of a church, and he, we had this, this martial artist come to our church who did these you know, exhibitions on stage, and then he would preach. And you know, as a kid, that was like really, really cool, you know. He would do all sorts of things with nunchucks, with swords, he would demonstrate fighting techniques and whatnot. He had quite a reputation. He's gotten himself into some legal trouble 
since then. His name is Mike Crane, but uh, he had a, he had a camp for youth and all that, and my my brothers used to go to it, and I I looked forward to going to it when I was older, but I never did. But he would do this trick where he'd lay a watermelon on someone's stomach, and it was usually my dad. I'd see my dad up on the stage, laying on like a piano bench or something, face up, watermelon sitting on his stomach, and Mike Crane would stand over him with a samurai sword, blindfolded, and he would take several practice swipes to kind of know exactly where he was at. And then he would chop one chop and go all the way through the watermelon without hurting my father's stomach, I, I guess. I've heard of stories, though, where these things do not end well. Luckily, it did for my dad. But anyway, um, that's, uh, those, are, those are just three examples of, of things like that. And anyway, strange, strange stuff. I don't, there's no point to it. I just wonder why people do. Do they stay, they want to stay relative? They, they just want to kind of live in perpetuity somehow. I, I kind of think that maybe has something to do with it. Okay. But here's my, here's my real point of this video. How long have you walked around? How long have you walked around with something up your nose? Now, I'm not being delicate here when I'm asking that question. I know I could have changed the terminology a little bit to sound a little more crass and probably a little more humorous. Somebody might have got a chuckle out of it, but no, I, I mean this. How long have you had something stuck up your nose? You're walking around life and people kind of wonder about you because it's just, there's something strange about you, right? Something they can't quite put their finger on. Maybe you can't either. You know, you know. Okay, here's, here's the reason I bring this up. So I came across this story about a man, 44-year-old man. This article is kind of old by now. He, well, he had something peculiar happen to him. Listen to this. I'll put it in their words. A man who regularly suffered a blocked nose can finally breathe easy after he sneezed out the cause. Part of a toy dart that had been stuck up a nostril for more than 40 years. Steve Easton, 51, often had a case of the sniffles or a headache and put it down to hay fever. But his nasal passages are now clear for the first time since childhood after one big blow cleared the problem. As he sat at his computer, he sneezed and out flew the sucker tip of a toy dart, about the size of a penny coin. Easton told his mother Pat and was amazed to find that at the age of seven, his parents had taken him to hospital after they thought he had inhaled the dart. I started a sneezing fit and it came out of my left nostril, said Easton of Camberley in Surrey. I thought, what's this? Where does this come from? and pulled out this rubber sucker. Can you imagine? I mean, wow. I spoke to my mom, and she said, oh, yes, we took you to hospital when you were seven. Of course, all this takes place in England, as you can tell by the way this is written. Well, yes, we took you to hospital when you were seven because we thought you had inhaled one. His mother and father, Quentin, both 77, of Buckinghamshire, had found little Steve playing with his dart gun at their home in Camberley and noticed one of the rubber tips was missing. Mrs. Easton said there was just one of those darts without a tip. I took him to the hospital, and they spent a lot of time looking for it, but in the end they said perhaps it was a mistake. I knew it wasn't, and it always worried me, and now it has suddenly shot out. We are all shocked. Easton has suffered from the sniffles all his life, but as far as he is aware, the sucker has caused him no other health issues. I brought it up with my doctor, and he was amazed like everybody else, but said there had been no harm done. It's just one of those things, he said. It had been there in my nasal cavity for 44 years. I was completely unaware that it was in my nose for that long. I feel no different now. I wonder if there's anything else up there. <laughs> so, okay, so this guy walked around with the sniffles, attributing it to hay fever for 44 years. He knew something wasn't right. Uh, something's, you know, if you have the sniffles for that long, something's wrong. I know a guy, I know a guy who sniffles a lot. Kind of annoying. Okay, everybody kind of wonders. 
what's up with him, right? What's up with him? But in this case, this man finally found out what the problem was. He sneezed it out. Thank goodness for him. I can't imagine how gross that, how, just how disgusting that must have been. But here's my point. Listen to this carefully. What have you been walking around with since childhood that has impacted your life? You didn't think it was any big deal. I mean, you know you have this thing about you, right? It could be, excuse me. <coughs> no, I'm not about to cough up anything. But uh, it, you could be like a, maybe a short temper. Maybe your, your ego gets bruised a little too easy. You can never be wrong. Or perhaps uh, you lack some kind of emotional control. Or you have bad spending habits. You're argumentative, very disagreeable. Um, you, you find yourself feeling low a little too often. Or maybe you say things you shouldn't say at the most inopportune moment. Right? Now, there, there's, a, there's a myriad of things that you're walking around with that you don't think really impacts your life that much. But you know it's there. You just kind of learn to live with it. In fact, what you have said, more than likely, a lot of people have said this, is, well, that's just the way I am. If you know me, you'll know that um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that. I'm going to think another thing. I'm going to, you know, this is just the way I am. Take me or leave me. Leave me. You know, it's just, it's what people do. They adjust. They cope. And a lot of times they don't deal with things. But they're walking around with something up their nose or somewhere else. And everybody else notices. And hopefully you have a lot of gracious people in your life that um, will not hold your feet to the fire every time you sniffle. Okay? But if you have something like this or any other thousand different things that could be um, listed here... If you're walking around with something like that, uh, that you know is kind of maladaptive, uh, annoying, injurious to you and to other people, but you have kind of dismissed it to the point that you don't believe it is anymore. I mean, if you think about it long enough, you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you're aware of your sniffle. The best thing you could do is investigate. You start blown away, right? Like this guy does. He, he has a sneezing fit. You're going to sneeze. Something's going to irritate this area. And it's going to trigger a reaction. And that side of you is going to come out. It's going to be seen by everybody. And they're going to go, well, that's just the way he is. That's just the way Greg is. So what he says is what he does. Nobody likes it. He doesn't even like it. But that's the way he is. No, 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 no. Take time to admit this probably isn't right. It's probably a sign of something else going on. And instead of saying to yourself, I am what I am, I do what I do, I think what I think, and I say what I say, ask yourself, how could I do things differently? You know when this hits me the most is when I'm reading biographies. Or just really good classical literature. The characters are, are very complex. I'll read, I'll read these stories, these human interactions, and I'll think to myself, am I like that? Because I can relate. You know, that's, that's what makes these books so good, is that uh, you begin to question, am I like this person? Because I see something in this individual that is kind of like me. And it irritates that area of your soul. And so, hopefully, you can, you can get to the place one day where you can... Um, what's the word I want to use? Expel the object lying deep with inside of you. You can do it. You can, you can change for the better. And you're going to find out. That's not really everybody else's fault. That's like this guy, he thought he had hay fever. 
We point our fingers at other things, other people, our circumstances, our income level, our friends, our family, our spouses. We accuse them and go, well, the reason why I'm like this is because of you or that or this or the other. Take time to investigate. Don't accept the sniffles. You know something's wrong. Get it worked out. All right. I hope this has helped. If it's meant anything to you at all, like I said, leave a comment. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, be wise.